There we go. Got him, Chad? Yep. Well, hello, folks. Welcome to the Angler's Experience. Oh, yeah. Today I'm fishing with my good friend, Chad Kaiser. Let me see here and get this fish here for a second here, guys. And as you can see, folks, we're fishing. We got him hooked good, Chad. We're fishing for walleyes, guys. And if you look at this fish right there, it's cold, folks. It's uh, middle of February right now, winter walleyes. These guys are starting to move to head to their spawning grounds. Air temperature is about 17 degrees. Boat's covered with ice. We're gonna come out here and see if we can hit these guys in the middle of their migration. Hopefully we're gonna catch a lot of fish. Hopefully we're gonna get some big fish. We're gonna be dragging soft plastics like this guy right here, as well as blade baits. So you folks stay tuned, see if Chad Kaiser and I can put some of these big walleyes in the boat out here in the cold of winter. All right, let's get that fish back in the water. See you, buddy. Angler's Experience is proudly brought to you by these fine sponsors. AXTackle.com, tackle that gives you the edge. Sidewinder planer boards, fight the fish, not the board. Bud's Diver, revolutionize your trolling world. Vans Grilling Based, taste the meat. And the Slaying Station, clean them in the boat, not the kitchen. Oh dude, this is a good one. I think it's a good fish, guys. Norasada Tackle. My good friend John Norsad has got these blades, guys, and they just kill. They are awesome. Oh, they're pulling hard in this water. This water is so cold, guys. Oh, I got him up underneath the chin, that's why. That fish swung at it, guys. I'll show you something here. I thought that fish was a lot bigger than that. What happened? Let me get this guy out of here real quick. This will happen a lot of times when you're blading, guys. These fish come up and they take a swing at it. And you're ripping it up off the bottom here. Let me set that fish back. That's a nice fish. What you're doing here, guys, is you're ripping this thing up real quick. And this is a north side of tackle blade bait. All I've done, he's John's got some die cut stickers that we put on there. We got clear water, so we're running chrome. And I just take some enamel paint, just like model paint, and paint the eyes red. And I've got a bunch of different series. He's got a bunch of different tape colors. But I just paint the eye on this one red because our water's fairly clear, so I'm running chrome with red. If it was muddied up, I'd run a brass with maybe a green eye. But when you rip it up like that, they'll strike at it. And that fish obviously missed, got it up underneath the chin. But uh, that'll happen blading sometimes. Right there, north side of tackle blade bait, guys. Okay, folks, what I want to do here is take a second and show you how to take one of these Norisada Tackle Blade Baits utilizing his die cut stickers and modify them yourself. This is, this is a technique that I do with these to change them up. He's got a lot of different colors in his line. I'm using my walleye gym tape right here for you. But there's a few things you can do when you're dealing with stickers. The mistake a lot of people make is they have oil on their fingers and they're handling the lure, then they try to put the sticker on there and it peels off. So you want to have it clean for starters. And the other thing you want to do is always make sure whatever you're applying your sticker to, whether it's a spinnerbait blade, it's a hard plastic bait, whatever it is, make sure it's at least room temperature. A lot of times I'll bring them in and heat them up with my wife's hair dryer just to get them warm. Now you don't have to get them smoking hot, just get them warm so that when you lay that down, that glue from that sticker will stick. So the materials that you're going to need, and I rated my wife's cabinet for doing her fingers, is just a little bit of fingernail polish remover here and some clear fingernail polish. You don't have to be nothing fancy. These two items, I'm sure you can find it. If you got to go buy it in the store, that's going to be a little funny for you, I know. But if you got a wife or a girlfriend, steal hers. It'll save you some humility, all right? So what we're going to do is take the blade right here, guys. This one's still got the hooks on it. I'd recommend taking the hooks off. But here's the standard blade right here. Here's what you're going to do. Just grab a paper towel. I use cotton swabs. I forgot to grab some when I brought this. Put a little of this fingernail polish remover on here. 
Now what that does, guys, is that's going to cut the oils from where you handled that, that blade. Just a little fingernail polish remover on there. Now from this point forward, when you're handling this, you want to hold it by the lead body. After you clean this, you don't want to put your hands all over it again. So we're going to take that fingernail polish remover and just wipe this guy down really good. Use the dry side of it and it'll air dry out real good on its own too. Flip it over here, get all those oils. I can see my fingerprints coming off there. Now that metal's getting nice and shiny. Let it air dry for a second. Now it's nice and clean. Now what we're gonna do is grab one of these pre-made die cuts and Johnny's got a lot of different colors of these. And when you see these in the package, it's a right and left side is what you're gonna see there, right and left. So I'm gonna find the one that matches up, which is this guy right here. Now what you wanna do with these guys is try to keep your hands off of them the best you can. So just grab a little tiny piece of it and get it started, peeled off of there. Now what I'll do is pick this blade up and I'm gonna come over the top of here. And it's got a little cut out there for your tie eyes where you're gonna put your swivel in at. I'm gonna lay it right over there, just like that. Now it's on there. Now what I'm gonna do is just take it Make sure it's sealed down on top of there, just like that. Now what I'm gonna do once more, I would set the other sticker on the other side, grab my fingernail polish remover, come in here and just one more time, clean this guy up, like so. This is the trick right here, guys. Clear fingernail polish remover. You're putting on a sticker on anything. I don't care what it is, use this trick, it's gonna work for you. Now grab some of this clear fingernail polish remover. Grab it by the eyes up here on the lead one more time. And you're gonna take this clear fingernail polish remover, and it doesn't have to be super thick, and you're just gonna paint clear fingernail polish remover nice and evenly all the way around the sticker, over the top of the sticker and over top of the entire blade. Now what this is gonna do, this stuff sets up pretty fast. Lay it down there and let it dry. And what happens, guys, with a sticker, say when you go out and we're using these winter walleyes, so it's cold out. When that metal starts to get cold, that glue starts to give up on that sticker and it starts to lift. So when a walleye hits it or you bounce it off a rock, it starts to lift it. The teeth from the walleye start to lift the sticker, or the rocks lift the sticker, or the hooks start to lift the sticker. What this clear fingernail polish does, lays a nice coat all the way across that and it seals that sticker down and puts a protective layer over the top of the sticker also for the damage of teeth, hooks, and rock. You're gonna get five times the use out of this. I've got some of my box guys, they've been on there for two years and we've been abusing them. But put that clear fingernail polish over the top like that, it seals that sticker down. Now the other trick that I do to mine when you see my blades is all my eyes are painted. And what I do is I throw back to the years when I was a kid making models. I got some testers red paint here, just enamel paint. And in these bulk run that John has where they don't have any paint on them, they've got a blank eye cavity. Now you can put an eye sticker in there or you can do this. Reason why I don't like the eye sticker necessarily is because a lot of times they're prism red. I like the straight blood red color right here. So just give this guy a quick shake. And all you're gonna do here is just take a real basic paintbrush, dip this guy in here and you're not brushing the paint on. All you're doing is creating a droplet on the end of that brush, coming into this eye cavity and just dapping it. And what happens as soon as you touch that eye cavity, that paint rolls off that brush and fills that socket up. Now what'll happen, you'll have to do this a couple times because as the paint dries, it's gonna suck down. So usually two, two coats, I'll, I'll lay a bunch of blades out, do all one side of them, let them dry, fill the eye cavity one more time, then flip them over and do the other side. So I'll put one more drop into this guy here just to fill it up. And walleyes see red very well, guys. That's one of the colors they see tremendously well, red and green. So now that's nice and filled up the excess off here. Now, after you've done that the second time, put the second coat into the eye, guys. You'll wanna take some of this fingernail polish again, once it's nice and dry, and just open it up and paint that cavity. And what that does is like a clear coat on your car. Just clear coats that eye in, now it's gonna last a long time. So give that a try, guys, next time you're modifying the blades. Put the sticker on nice and clean, make sure it's room temperature, seal it over the top, Paint the eye in, you've got a knockout product. Be sure to check out North Side of Tackle's new custom line of blade baits, complete with eyes in blue and white, green and chartreuse, and the new goey pattern. Angler's Experience is brought to you in part by AX Video Gallery, guaranteed to make you a better angler.
Roundy's Kawasaki, a winning tradition since 1976. Norisada Custom Tackle, Rip Up a Hog, Pro Fish Taxidermy, second to none, and American Rodsmiths. Don't go away, we'll be right back with more of the Angler's Experience. There's one right there. Oh, there's one right dragon. there. Dragon? Yep, just dragon. Dragon the goby, guys. I think this is gonna be a new hot walleye bait. Nice fish. They just inhale that thing, man. Nice, chunky winter. That fish has got better color. See that, folks? That those fish you saw before we were catching, they're real pale. This one's been up shallower. It's got a little color, a little, little pigment. It's like when we go out and suntan, the same thing happens here. He's getting some pigment going in. Took that goby right there, dragon, guys. Just looks like a little sculpin down there. All right, let's throw that fish back and get another one. What we're doing right here, you can see we're in a big reservoir. We're at the mouth of a spawning tributary right here. It's the middle of February. These fish are starting to stage. Our water temperature is starting to move up from 33 degrees. It's about 36 degrees right now. And these males are starting to move as well as the females. We may stick a few of those big females. But what we're doing right out behind us right here, we've got a sunken island that runs about 200 yards. And out behind us is the basin of this reservoir. And you're looking about 150, 200 feet behind us. And then it rises up. This island rises up to about 19 feet 18 feet in some spots and then it dishes back towards the show down to another 45 to 50 feet and what we're doing is we're keeping the boat in about 30 feet of water we're casting these baits up be it the the uh, dragon method like chad's doing with the goby on there or the blade method like i'm doing here but we're casting up onto the shallow section of this thing and we're ripping these back and what these fish are doing as they come out of this reservoir to funnel in here this is the first spot they come to right here this is where they're staging at they'll stage here and then as the water temperatures start to increase and the flow starts to increase and they'll start moving up but what you got to do is you got to find the right structure guys you, you can catch these fish on all different kinds of things these happen to be our favorites the goby's going to be our new favorite because that's a brand new bait but the key is is being on the right spot people go out here and they just start throwing into the open and they don't have a clue what where to go and you're going to fish all day long and not catch anything the key is is get on these spots sunken islands like this tip of this island has been once again the percentage triangle that we talk about this island if you looked at it as a whole a spot on a spot like we call it out here on the end where it comes down and drops off is right at the tip and that's the the spot on the spot that's where most of the fish are coming from but get out there look at your maps buy a map if your gps has the map lake or the lake map find these humps these islands these percentage triangles and get out there and fish because that's where they're located at let's get back after it oh there's one right th whoa that's a good head shake see that head shake we need the uh... yeah i don't know dude this is a good fish Pretty good size head shakes. Back yeah. on it, is it? Yep. I can't tell though, buddy. These fish have been fighting so hard. Folks, we just caught that one fish. I took two seconds to strip some clothes off because I'm starting to sweat to death here. Threw out my blade, went back from the goby to the blade there, and boom. Oh yeah. Big fish, Chad. Yeah. Big fish. Big, big fish. <sighs> Look at that, guys. Starting to get up to that size that we're looking for now right there north side of tackle blades baby is that awesome <laughs> that is awesome guys that fish there Woo. probably seven eight pounds maybe yep. awesome Another good one let's slide her back in the water see if we can't get some more man we're on a roll here see you later darling back down guys oh, right there guys folks we just let that fish go chad's got a mouthful of sandwich <laughs> And I tossed right back out to where I just hooked that fish, and bam, another one, guys. Oh, look at that one, Chad. Net fish, oh. Chad. Net, net, net. Oh, baby. Nice fish, nice fish. Come on, Chad. Come on, Chad. Get him, Chad. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Would you look at this, guys? That is back-to-back -back fish, folks. Look at this fish right here. Look at that Norsada blade, guys. This is a toad, guys. Look at this fish, guys. Don't want to hurt this big female, guys. Look at that. Is that awesome or what? Yeah, baby. Let's see where that one's at, guys. I bet we're pushing close to 10 on this fish. Yeah. 11 pounds, guys. An 11 pounder, baby. Right there, guys. Middle of winter. Nobody's out here. It was cold this morning. It's warming up. We're stripping clothes down. Chad's eating, and I'm catching fish. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get that fish back in the water. Look at that. That is an absolute beauty, guys. 11 pounds. Ready, baby? 
Folks, I want to take a second here and just show you the, the blading method that we're using. We're casting these out. So remember when we talked, when we're casting out the blades, I'm hooking in the front hole of the three holes. I'm hooking up in the front. And all we're doing to do this properly, guys, our rod right here, we've got a seven foot, six and a half. Some guys like a six and a half. I like a seven foot, but a six and a half medium heavy action spinning rod fast on the tip. So a fast action. Eight pound test fire line. We've got eight pound Berkeley Trilene fluorocarbon leader with our snap connecting to our blade. And what we're doing, we've got our sunken island out front. Whatever your structure is, this is the same technique I want you to use. Make a cast. What we're doing, we're casting up into about 16, 17 feet. And I'm just holding it tight right now and I'm waiting to feel that blade hit the bottom. It's sinking, sinking. There, just hit the bottom. You can feel it go slack. Now what you're gonna do is reel down and pop it up. And when you're coming back down, when it's falling, you're falling it on a tight line, guys. Falling it on a tight line. So I'm ripping up, and as I'm dropping, I'm letting it fall, and I'm reeling down to it. So it's falling. You don't want it to fall on slack, because what's going to happen when it's dropping, you're going to feel a slight tink. As soon as you feel that, you got to rip into them, guys. you you got to rip into them. That's the thing with the blades. As soon as you feel it, you got to pull back. So we're dropping down, lift it up, force it back to the bottom, pop it up. Anytime you feel a tap, you rip up, set the hook. Now, not too many guys are casting these blades. And what you guys need to keep in mind, if you cast these things and rip them like this, you're gonna catch some tremendous fish. It's not just a vertical approach. A lot of people look at blade baits and walleye fishing in general as having to be straight down. We rarely vertical jig unless we're over school. We're always casting. Pop it back, push it back down, lift it up. Just like that, guys. And rip up on it. Feel that thing shake. We want that north side of tackle blade down there causing a bunch of commotion, a lot of vibration, bringing those big fish in. All it is a reaction strike, up and down. When that thing starts to fall, that's when they'll eat it. This segment of the Angler's Experience is brought to you by Blade Runner Tackle, proven quality lures. River to Sea, lures that produce results. Tobler Marina, your one-stop boat shop. Batesmith, quality fish on quality baits. Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. And River City Solid Surface, Spokane's countertop experts. We'll be right back with more of the Angler's Experience. Welcome back to the Angler's Experience. Got it? Oh, there we go. Good fish. Good fish, Seth. The goby strikes again. Got it, Chad. All right. Look at that one, guys. Look at that, guys. Beautiful fish on the goby again. Dragging that sculpin down there. Awesome, huh? Incredible. All right, let's get her back. Oh, yeah. Tell you what happened right there. If you can see, right now we're about the middle of the day, and what's happened is walleyes have slowed down, and we've made a few changes. I'm still hucking my blade bait, but we've gone. Chad's going strictly with the dragon, with the goby right there. And what it's doing is we're going to a subtle presentation, and my blade is just about shut off. And it's not that it's not producing. The reason is, is the conditions up above. We have no wind. The, the sun is very high, so you're getting maximum light penetration into the water, which kind of puts those walleyes off a little bit. And what you have to do is change up. You have to adapt. But Chad just poked that big fish there, just going to dragon. Folks, if you have these kind of conditions like this, and people always say, oh, they just quit biting. Well, what happened is you did not adjust with them. And by going strictly to this dragon right here and just, just slowly dragging, that sculpin along the bottom, you're making a real easy meal for them to catch. There's some size to it, so they know there's going to be a reward. But get away from that faster action and go to that dragon when things start to slow down. We know they're sitting on this sunken island right here. We just change her up and go strictly with the dragon. All right, Chad, let's get back after it, buddy. There right we go. Chad? Yep. Good fish? Yep, good one. Oh. You see him? You see him? Big? I think he might be our teenager, Seth. Really? Oh, come on, brother. That fish is just staying in the basement, man. Oh, yeah, there he is. There's a big one. Look at this one, guys. Oh, that's a big fish. Got him! Oh, oh yeah. yeah. There you go, buddy. All right, Chadley. <coughs> Look at here, folks. <laughs> there it is. A... Look at you, Seth. That is a pig. Look at that, brother. That is a toy. Look at that, guys. Dragging the goby, guys. Here, Chad. Grab your... Let's put him on the boga grip here. We don't want to hurt this big female. I don't want to hurt this big female. Wow, Chad. Look at that, brother. 
hang on, hang on. That thing is a huge fish. 14 pounds, guys. 14 pounder, Chad. Here you go, buddy. That is what it's all about. Look at the girth on that fish, guys. Is that incredible or what? This fall, Chad got a 16 and a half pounder out with us. There's a 14 pounder dragging the Berkeley Gobi, guys. What a beauty, look at that fish. Oh yeah, she's gonna be gone. Look at that. Boom, look at that toad, dude. Folks, I wanna show you the setup that Chad just caught that big 14 pounder on, man. What a beautiful fish. What it is, this is a Berkeley Go Gobies and they're four inch bait. And these things, guys, I think they're going to be the new fantastic plastic right here. What it is, the gobies basically, if you look at like Great Lakes, is the gobies that are in there living in the bottom that the guys are catching all the smallmouth on. But it also imitates a lot of other things. Um, for us up here in the northwest, we don't really have gobies. But what we've got, we've got sculpin. Um, a bullhead, small bullhead catfish could imitate this. A fathead chub, you could use this to imitate. Um, but what we're doing right here, guys, and these these fish in here, what these guys are feeding on right here primarily, we're seeing schools of perch about that big. Those perch right now are sucked down to the bottom. We caught a fish earlier in the day that was spit up a small perch and we had cranked it in, and we grabbed the, the goby right here, and all we're doing is dragging it. Now you can use a football head, or you can use a Northland head like this guy right here, an oddball head. And we're using a little bit heavier because what we're doing is we're casting out onto this island and we're dragging it and we're just popping it occasionally. So all you do right here, guys, is very simple. And this guy here is the camo pattern and it's red and green, which are the best sight for walleyes, the red and green. That's what they see best. So this is the camo pattern, green back, red belly. And it's got a flat side right here, which tells you that's the bottom. All we're doing is coming through like this and just poking that jig head out right up center. But that's it right there, guys. Got to get some of these. These are going to be killer. We can't wait for the smallmouth season to start because these things are absolutely, I thought I had a fish right there. These things are absolutely going to be killer, guys. These gobies right here. So look them up. Berkeley Goby Gulp, made out of the Gulp product, AXTackle.com. A pile of different colors. One thing's for sure, guys. You seen it with Chad? They'll catch big, big walleyes. Folks, I tell you what, middle of winter out here. Chad's fish there. Middle of winter out here. Fishing for these walleyes with my good friend, Chad. Tell you what, guys, you can't beat it. But I encourage you folks to get out there, get some of these blade baits like we talked about, axtackle.com. Look at that nice little closer fish right there. Got that blade right in the top of his mouth. He just barely had it, you see that? <laughs> Tell you what, folks, drag these gobies, rip these blades, come out here in wintertime, 36 degree water, you can catch fish like this all day long, you on the right. Right piece of structure. All right, Chad, let's get that fish back in the water and head for the truck, buddy. Awesome day, man. Boom, there he goes. <laughs>